hello friends. Welcome to another Instagram Live. I'm Bethany. I kind of jumped on a minute early because I'm going to um, connect to another um, camera. So while everybody's tuning in real quick, I'm gonna be working on getting this other camera connected and then we'll get started. So just give me just a quick minute. Let's see here. I hope everybody's doing well. There we go. Okay. There we go. Sorry, it just takes a minute. We're going to get started in just a second. All right, guys. Welcome. My name is Bethany. For those who are just tuning in, let me change this real quick. Hold on. There you go. Can you guys hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can. <laughs> awesome. Hello, everyone. We're going to get started in just a second. Just want everybody to jump on. Awesome. All right, getting some thumbs up. So I guess that's it means it's working. We're doing something a little different today. We have a camera here for me to see you. And then we have a camera over here for you to see the machine. Because the fun part of like technology and being able to do these live events is so that we can get connected. Um, so I wanna see your questions. I wanna see your comments. It's hard for me to do that when the camera's facing the, the sewing machine. So let me know if this is working um, and if we're having any issues, it's our first time trying something like this. So if the audio is good, give me some hearts and thumbs up and then we'll get started. Okay. Happy Tuesday. I dressed up in my fall and pumpkin stuff. So happy fall. So this is my favorite season. All right. I got some thumbs up. You hear an echo. Is everybody hearing an echo? Okay, is this working? Is that better for the camera? Is there still an echo? I appreciate y'all's patience as we kind of figure out these quirks. Like I said, it's our first time kind of doing this dual camera thing, but we wanna give you guys the best content we can. So if it's not working, we'll go to plan B. So let me know if there's an echo. Still echo, okay. Is it better now? Let's try that again. Can you still hear an echo? I've done this once before on a different account and I didn't have echoes. And I use the same two phones, so, okay. There it is. All right, well, let's, is it better? better not such a bad echo we're working now okay if anything goes bad just let me know and we'll make some adjustments I appreciate you all being patient as we kind of figure this out thank you for your feedback I appreciate it okay hi <laughs> happy Tuesday my name is Bethany I am a Singer Education Support Specialist, it's a mouthful, um, but I work for Singer uh, with the Education Department and I get to come on here and show you guys some of our really awesome machines, um, do some fun projects from time to time, create cool projects. Um, so lots of fun stuff that I get to do 
and today we're going to be talking about the Singer Quantum Stylus 9960, which is the machine I have right here. Um, this is one of our top of the line sewing machines. Like it has got all the bells and whistles. And so today I want to point out some of the things that are familiar from other machines that we have, but some things that really make this one stand out. I'm going to do a couple of demonstrations of some of the feet that come with this machine comes with a lot of accessories, a lot of accessories. So we're gonna go over a lot of fun stuff, but real quick, um, thank you guys for tuning in. If you have a Singer Quantum Stylus 9960 already, drop in the chat what you love about this machine, your favorite feature. It might be something I'm talking about today, but it might not have been on my agenda and it's worth mentioning, I will definitely mention it. So let me know that um, and we'll kind of get started in a second. For those who don't know, um, September is National Sewing Month. So Singer has been celebrating that all month long, sharing people's um, sewing stories or how they got started with sewing. So I thought I'd take two minutes at the beginning while people continue to jump on um, to share my Singer story and my sewing story. Um, like I said, my name is Bethany. I have been sewing for almost 30 years now. I'm gonna age myself a little bit there, but I've been sewing for, since I was about seven years old, um, seven or eight. Uh, my mom is a sewist, has been my entire life, and she made all of my clothes growing up and my brother's clothes and um, just amazingly talented. She made a lot of her own clothes and has just always been a sewist. Um, so from her, I kind of got the bug. I saw it firsthand all the time. I saw the amazing things she was able to create. I loved wearing the beautiful dresses and the special outfits for school and picture day that she would make for me. And I got to be a part of picking out those fabrics and designs and stuff when I got a little older and see them come to fruition as she made them. And um, that was just really special for me. And she still has a lot of those dresses. Um, so, and she would even put ruffles on my socks like to ma I had a bow to match every outfit like it was the whole kit and caboodle as they used to say um, so she was kind of my inspiration for getting into sewing um, and then I got into fashion design school and did that for a little while and then I started a family <laughs> and I kind of got out of it a little bit um, for just myself um, and then I, I got back into it several years ago um, and I've just recently picked up garment sewing again for the first time in about 15 years. So it's fun getting back into garment sewing, um, but I do all types of sewing, a lot of crafting sewing. Um, my mom is now a quilter. So since she can't really sew <laughs> for us anymore, you know, we're all grown up. And um, so she now quilts and does amazing quilts and wall hangings and table runners and all of those kind of things. So anyways, um, I just kind of have been always surrounded by someone who sews. And so I always had that kind of in my life. And I caught the bug, as you can say, and I love it. I love teaching other people how to sew. It's one of my greatest passions is to pass my talents and what I've learned to someone else in the next generation. And I think that's what's so pretty, uh, pretty awesome about sewing is it's just been around for so long. I mean, Singer just turned 170 years old last month so as a company so that's as a brand so that's pretty amazing and the fact that we continue to sew and continue to create it's just it brings me so much joy and I hope it does you as well so that's my little story um we're gonna go over this machine I'll be your student y'all are so sweet thank you um I do a lot of tutorials and, and other things so just keep checking in with here Facebook and singer.com for all of that fun information. So today's machine we're featuring is the Quantum Stylus 9960. This is a computerized sewing machine. This machine um, is currently on sale, I believe for $150 off on singer.com. So go check that out. But we're gonna talk about all of the amazing things that come with this machine. Uh, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> I was really shocked when I first opened the box. I just didn't realize it came with so much. So I'm excited to tell you about those things. Um, but like I said, this is a computerized machine. Um, if you missed my Instagram live last month in, in August, um, we did a live comparing mechanical to computerized machines and I used the heavy duty 
4452 and the heavy duty 6800C to do that. Um, so kind of same concept, it's a computerized machine, but if you have never really done like a side-by-side -side comparison of two mechanical and computerized machines, I highly recommend going back and watching that live not right now because we're hanging out, but afterwards. And then um, also on singer.com, there's two great features that I highly recommend you doing if you're in the market for trying to find the right sewing machine for you. Um, there is a little quiz on there. It's called Find Your Machine, I believe. And you just kind of answer a few questions and it kind of gets to know where you're at in your sewing journey, whether you're a beginner or more advanced um, and the types of sewing you like to do, the types of fabrics you like to use, all of that kind of stuff. And that is going to help the quiz figure out what's the best type of machines you should be looking at. So you get one that's best suited for what you want to do. Um, and then when it gives you several options, there's another feature on there where you can click compare and you can compare multiple machines side by side, kind of like in a grid form where it lays out like all the details and stats, the important things that you want to know. So if there's a, let's say the scissor button right here, this is a, um, automatically cut your threads for you. If that's a big must have for you and you're comparing two computerized machines and one has it and one doesn't, that could be a deciding factor for you. So it's just a great way to kind of see all of those details. So I definitely recommend if you're in the market or considering an upgrade to check out those two features on singer.com. But if you've never had a computerized machine before and you have a mechanical, that last Instagram live from August that I did with the two heavy duties might also give you some additional information to determine if a computerized machine is the right next step for you. Um, today, you might learn that as well from this live. So let's see how it goes. Oh, I've got a fly in here. I have an older singer, but want to purchase this machine. This is a fantastic machine. Your, your mind's gonna get blown today. Just be prepared because mine was when I opened it and I thought I had seen it all. All right, so this machine, like I said, comes with a ton of accessories. So we're gonna start there. Um, I have a lot of them laid out right here. I'm gonna turn this camera just a little bit. There we go. So there's a lot, this right here are just the feet, okay? Um, pretty amazing how much comes with this machine. We're gonna be using these over here today, but I wanted to point out a couple of the other ones. And as I do, I'm gonna drop them back in my little bag here. Um, this one right here, we'll start with the big one. This is the walking foot. This foot is great for thicker fabrics. I'll give you a good example of when I used this foot last time. I was sewing um, a denim and faux Sherpa together. I was making a little snuggle sack for a doggy. And this faux Sherpa has a stretch, the denim does not. And in order for these to feed evenly so that it didn't pull and stretch my Sherpa, I used the walking foot and it helped it feed evenly so I wouldn't have too much Sherpa when I got all the way around the opening and not enough denim. So it helps keep it um, feeding evenly your top and bottom fabric, especially if they're different types of fabrics and they're heavy or thick fabric. So this is an amazing um, foot. It doesn't normally come with sewing machines, but it comes with this one. So that is a huge bonus. So I'll set that one aside. This one right here is your quarter inch foot. What's really cool about this one is it's clear. And you can easily see the red marks on it, the, the guidelines and everything. I love that it's clear. This is fantastic for quilters. If you're a quilter, this is a must have machine for you. Um, if you're interested in getting into quilting, this is a great machine for that. So quarter inch foot comes with this machine and I love that it's a clear one. We have a few others. I'm not gonna mention all of them because there's a lot, but this is a blind hem foot. I love the button foot that comes with this one because it has the clear rubber bottom right here instead of the blue like the other machines. There's cording feet and zipper feet, which is really cool. This zipper foot, um, if you clip it onto the left side, sorry, clip it onto the left side, you're doing a zipper on that side. Or if you're doing a zipper on this side, you just clip it to that side. So it's really um, easy to use. Uh, let's see here. we got an open toe foot. we got a rolled hem foot. Just lots of feet, okay? You get the picture here. Um, we're gonna go over these feet in a little bit, so I'm just gonna kind of set them to the side. I have this little gadget right here, and I'm gonna kind of zoom you guys in so you can see it. Ooh, here we go, getting in close. There we go. This right here is a guide for your fabric. So if you need to make sure that your fabric stays lined up right here, 
if you're a beginner sewist or you're doing some quilting and you need to be very precise or you're doing some top stitching or decorative stitching, you want to be very precise. This right here is fantastic. It screws in and tightens. And then when you loosen it, you can adjust it to wherever you need it to be. I'm going to take it off for now because it's going to be in my way later. But I wanted to show you what that, what that is. That's kind of cool, right? There's all sorts of little tools in here. And it has a little screw hole right here that it goes right into. Super easy to use. You just put your fabric right up against that and you just keep it nice and level and even. So nice little bonus tool right there. You're also going to get some needles. Uh, this is a variety pack of needles um, that come with the machine. Remember, you need to change your needle every eight to 10 hours of sewing. If you start to have any issues with your sewing, nine times out of 10, it's either your machine is threaded wrong um, or you need to change your needle or you might be using the wrong needle. So always start with swapping out a needle, okay? Comes with extras. You're gonna have a nice little screwdriver. This is for changing out the needle, taking off the ankle over here, those types of things. You also get this little thing like this. It's another little screwdriver. It's like a key. It's a smaller one for unscrewing the screws here and back here on this plate cover. Um, every so often, some people say every five to six bobbin changes, to take that off and use the little brush that comes with it and kind of get out the lint and dust, maybe some of the threads that got caught down in there. It's good to keep it clean to keep your machine um, working properly. Of course, you always get your little seam ripper. Let's hope you don't have to use it too much. And then we have a, uh, it comes with four of these clear class 15 bobbins. You wanna make sure you use the class 15, not the 15J. The 15J is gonna have a curve to it. The class 15 is what you need. So be sure you use the ones that come with your machine. Also, if your machine comes with the plastic ones, only use the plastic ones. Don't swap them out for a metal one. Um, your machine is used to and set for the weight of this bobbin and the metal ones are a little heavier. So just be aware of that. It could mess it up, okay? All right. So we kind of went over some of those accessories, but there's more accessories. There, there's more than what I have here, okay? There are, let's see here, right here. I got accessories everywhere, so bear with me. There is a whole nother bonus kit of accessories. Here, I'll hold them down here. I'm not gonna pull them all out. There's more feet, there's more tools. There's a whole nother ankle that goes onto this machine just for these accessories. These are amazing accessories. So I'm gonna just show you what they are on this little pamphlet right here. Um, it comes with it, so you can learn exactly how to use these bonus feet. Um, but there's the shank that I was telling you, this is the little ankle piece that goes on to clip all of these accessories onto this machine. So there's an adjustable bias binder. I love making my own bias tape. Um, there's a braiding foot, there's a braiding guide. There's a clearance plate. This little plate right here is fantastic. If you were attaching a button that you wanna be able to use as a functioning button to go through a buttonhole, you don't want that button to be so tight to your fabric you can't get it through the buttonhole. You need a little space, you need a little extra thread between the button and the fabric. And if you place this there under the buttonhole foot, then it will give you that little gap so that you have a secure button but enough wiggle room to move your button around to be able to put it through the buttonhole. Genius, right? So simple, but makes the biggest difference. There's also a single welt cording foot. I love the fancy trim foot just for the name because I love anything fancy, but this is for putting sequins on or embellishments. And then a stitch in the ditch foot. This is great for quilting. This is what you're gonna use that for is a lot of quilting. So just, know that this comes with it. So again, if you're trying to get into quilting or beginner quilter, this machine really sets you up to just hit the ground running with quilting. So it comes with all of these. Oh, I've, yeah, I mentioned all of them. Okay, so it comes with this little pamphlet too. Again, it's a lot of accessories. I'm not, I'm not done yet. There's more. This table right here, I probably, you probably noticed when I zoomed out that this right here is bigger 
it looks bigger than what you would think. Well, it is. This is an additional um, extension arm table. So this isn't a table that is an attachment that comes with the machine. Again, for, this machine is made for quilters. Um, but everybody, really, you can um, slide it on and off. And these little legs fold up. And then you can just stow it away nice and flat. It has the ruler built in, which is so nice. And it creates a nice level flat surface for working with larger pieces of fabric. So um, anyway, so that's that one. Now you do obviously get the regular um, arm that goes on the machine that you can take on and off. And this arm does have your compartment to store all of your accessories. But I took it off for today's purpose and put this table on because I wanted to show it to you. But with my camera set up, I can't really take it on and off. So. But it does come with this one and it also has the ruler across the front. So I just wanted to point that out to you. Okay, we've gone over a lot. Let me just kind of reach through here. Am I missing any comments? Just got this machine for a birthday present. Well, that was a fantastic birthday. I mean, you just hit the jackpot. Congratulations and happy birthday. So many decorative stitches. We are about to get to that. Okay. So with this machine, oh, I'm also meant to mention, you do get a full booklet of instructions, uh, full manual. It's very detailed. Uh, it's in Spanish and in English. And you can also digitally download this off singer.com. So you can have it like on your phone or your iPad or your computer right, right next to your machine. But I like, I'm old school. I like the book. I like the dog ear things, highlight things. I put those little flag stickers in it um, for things that I need to reference again and again. So good to know that we have that available to us. All right, so a couple of things that I'm gonna show you today are some of the features of this machine that make it kind of stand out from the others. So where should we start? I have a couple of examples. And I'm thinking, let's see here. One of the things I love about sewing is I'm always finding new things to try. So we're gonna start with something that I, um, I'm still learning. Okay, I am not, an expert sewist in all things. Like I said, my mom is the quilter in, in between the two of us. I'm not. I love quilting. I appreciate quilting. I'm just not, it's just not something I've done a whole lot of. Um, I want to learn and this machine kind of gave me the bug because it comes with this foot right here. Can you guys see that? It's a free motion foot or darning foot as some people call it. And I'm not going to go through and put it on the machine because you have to take the whole ankle and everything off to do it. So for time's sake, I'm not going to stick it on today. I will create another video in the future um, when I get better at this <laughs> um, to uh, really demonstrate how it works. But just for reference, I don't have a foot on the machine right now, but this ankle is there. So this ankle right here would go away. But this foot would come in kind of like this, but actually under the needle but this little bar goes up top. So it moves with the needle, okay? Um, and what's nice is you're gonna have this sitting here and you're gonna lower your feed dogs. When you're doing free motion, you know how the feed dogs are up right now and they're rough, you can feel them. That's what feeds the fabric through the machine, front to back or back to front if you're doing a back stitch. Um, but it feeds it in one direction. Well, with free motion, we want it to we want to be able to move our fabric all over, right? But we can't do that with the feed dogs up. So if you actually slide this table off, like I said, I, with my setup, I can't do that right now. But if you slide the table off, there's a, le a little switch underneath and that lowers the feed dogs and it will just drop them down so that they don't catch the fabric and then you can have complete free motion. There's several different types of feet and stitches that you will need to lower the feed dogs for and this is one of those. Um, in order to get the feed dogs back up, <laughs> you need to go back under here and flip, flip that switch back the other way, but you'll notice the feed dog will not come right back up. You would think that they would, but they don't. In order to get them to come all the way back up, you use your hand wheel over here on the right hand side and you always turn your hand wheel towards you, by the way, never away, always towards you. Turn it towards you so that your needle goes down and comes back up in one full stitch motion. And as it's going down and coming back up, you'll see those feed dog pop back up. Um, but for this progress with the uh, free motion foot, we want to keep the feed dog down. Now, I am going to show you my example. I'm going to scoot this back a little bit so you can see my example. Um, 
like I said, this was when I got this machine, it was my first time ever using this foot. So don't laugh at me. We're all learning together on this. I'm still learning a lot of new things. That's the, I feel like if I ever learn everything there is to know about sewing, then I won't enjoy sewing anymore. But there's so many new things that come out all the time that I don't think I'll ever know everything, but it's just so exciting to learn. All right, so this was my first attempt. Now this was me just trying to do like a slight wave in a line. Like I wasn't trying to create anything here just to get the feel for this foot. Um, I used a cotton fabric. I put some batting behind it. I used a red thread so you guys could see it. Um, I did use a rayon thread, so that was just preference for me. Um, so the second time I decided to do it, this is the embarrassing one. I decided to make a flower. I, I always thought I was pretty like good at drawing like simple flowers, you know, the little loops and then the little tail down with the petals or the leaves. Yeah. So this is what I came up with. <laughs> Don't really know um, what happened here, but I did get the stem and the leaf. So it was my first time ever trying this and I show it to you because we're all learning and you got to start somewhere. And I'm not going to lie. It was made, I was a little scared to try this. It's always scary to try something new sometimes, but just thought I'm just going to go for it. I had no intentions of showing this to you all today, but I thought, let's just be real. Okay. Um, I love someone says it's abstract art. Well, that's awesome because that's <laughs> what I focused on in fine art was abstract art. So maybe that's why it looked that way. So my third attempt at using this foot, I did the flower again and I got better. I forgot my, I forgot my leaves. I got so excited. I forgot to put leaves, but I felt like this was so much better. I got a little, little wonky in a couple, but I feel like I was starting to get a feel for how this foot works. Free motion takes practice, takes a lot of practice and you really can make it your own. There's really no particular way to, to stitch free motion. It's truly your own design right there. Um, so it's kind of like drawing with thread. How cool is that? And then my last one, I finally did it one more time. I got a little bit better flower and I definitely got two petals or two leaves down at the bottom. So I felt like I was improving in four times, my fourth time using this um, foot. So you can see it just takes some getting used to. Um, but I think I'm pretty proud of that. I mean, it went from a kind of a straight line to, I appreciate you saying abstract. That's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> to actually looking like a flower. And I could see how I could totally use something like this, not just for quilting, but for maybe adding some decorative stitches onto um, some jeans or a denim jacket or a fun little skirt or something like that. So, you know, you, you just got to try it. So if you get this machine or if you have this machine and you've never tried this foot, you need to try it. I am challenging you to try something new, okay? So I wanted to showcase that foot, but next time I'll, I'll do a quicker, we'll just go over that next, another time. All right, so the next thing I wanna show you all is, this is the standard foot right here. This is a foot A, you see how they have letters on them? Can you see that in the light? I'm trying to turn it, there you go, you can kind of see it. This one is your kind of universal foot for this machine, but it has this little, spring screw thing on it and when I first saw it I was like well what in tarnation is this but I'm going to figure it out and I did and I'm going to show you what I use it for so I am going to get it in here I'm going to do an actual sewing example here I love how easy it is to put the feet on by the way I got it a little too far back you hear it click into place, it's so satisfying. <laughs> so I've got it clicked into place. You know it's in place and secure when it comes up when you lift the um, lift it up. So I'm gonna put this thread kind of up underneath. Sorry, my hand's in the way. All right, so what I'm gonna show you is like an, an example with um, denim. If you were to need to hem a pair of jeans, you know how you have that seam down the side of your jeans and it's thick, right? And you need to be able to sew through this. Um, so, but you need to roll up the, the pant leg and then you need to be able to sew across here. 
okay? But you've got to go over this hump that's now twice as thick. This is what helps you do that. It's pretty great. So we're going to try it. Let's hope it works because, you know, it's live and everything seems to go wrong when I do live videos. So we're just going to assume it's going to work and be beautiful because it worked last night when I did all my other examples. <laughs> all right. So I am going to, like I said, fold it over. I'm going to place the fabric under the foot right here. Did I get it under there? By the way, this foot right here, when you lift it up, it can go up even further. You guys see that? It goes up. This is even further. This is up. This is down. This is up. This is extended up. It has an extended lift, which is great, especially when you're trying to put thicker fabrics underneath. There we go. And we're going to put it down. Right here is your needle up down button. This is one of my favorite features that comes on most computerized machines and why I'm a huge fan of computerized machines. Um, you literally just get your needle down in place. And I have this set to a straight stitch. Um, nothing fancy here. I do have a denim needle in here, by the way. I went ahead and put it in. We'll just use it today for the examples. And we're sewing and we're sewing and you can see here that this is not um, screwed in. This has got some wobble to it, okay? But as it starts to, I'm gonna try to do this on both sides. See how the foot starts to lift up? How great is that? It naturally lifts up to go over this hump. It's not turning and pushing my fabric back. It's got, it's got a little, kind of sled up the hill. Okay, we're going to call it that sled up the hill. And now that we've gotten a little closer, we're going to stop our needle is down, I'm going to lift the foot. And this is when you're going to lift this pin, stick it in, and then put the foot back down. Now the pin is in place and the back of the foot is elevated to be level with the height of this bulky seam that we have right here. You can hear it sewing through all of this. We'll take it nice and slow. Now watch this pin. I think you just heard it pop. Did you hear it pop? It's kind of quiet. It pops because once it gets completely elevated, it doesn't need to stay firm in that place. It pops back out. And then my foot goes back down nice and smooth. And I have this on the slowest. I was like, why is this sewing slow, slow? There's a little dial up here, I'll show it to you in a second. But adjust your speed. All right, we're done. But here's the next thing I wanna show you. Right here is a little scissor button. This little scissor button, it cuts your thread for you. Remember we talked about it earlier? It's just so satisfying. All right, so we're gonna take it right out. There you go. I didn't cut my top thread, but we sewed all the way across there. Nice and smooth, nice and even. Easily went over that thick, heavy seam. And it looks great. No issues. So this is gonna make hemming my dad's pants that he gave me this weekend a lot easier. <laughs> so I wanted to show that foot to you. This is your standard foot. Um, and that is that little screw button right there on the side. So if you're sewing over anything bulky, it doesn't have to be denim and it doesn't have to be a seam um, or hem, right? But if you've got multiple layers you're sewing over, sometimes um, when you approach that, this right here can make a big difference in getting you over that hump. And just take it nice and slow, make sure you have the right needle in place, okay? So let's set that one aside. All right, so I'm gonna kind of zoom over here. We're going to talk about all of these buttons over here and, and everything that's up here, okay? Oh, forgive me for moving you guys around a little bit, but I want you guys to see everything and get up close and personal. All right, so this machine, as I said multiple times, it's computerized. Um, you just learned three things. Oh my goodness. Thanks. I'm so glad. Now go share them with someone else that sews, right? That's how we share and we all learn. All right, so on this computerized singer machine, um, the Quantum Stylus 9960, it does have an LED screen. 
the screen um, has a lot of buttons over here that I want to kind of point out to you. These right here are fantastic. These are your go-to stitches. These are the most commonly used stitches. You've got a straight stitch with a needle position to the left. You've got a straight stitch with a center needle position. You've got a straight stitch that has a little back stitch at the beginning to kind of lock it in place, put your zigzag, overlocks, your stretch, your buttonhole, your standard buttonhole. You've got quite a few here. And you just literally click on one and you're ready to go. So it makes it even faster. What's great is this machine right here tells you which foot you need. So this says foot A. And it will show you similar to what it looks like. So if it doesn't have the letter on it, which most of them do, then you'll know which one to use. Um, but the one that we just put in the machine that has the little screw button, the uh, spring button on the side, um, that is foot A. So most of these are gonna take foot A. There's a couple like this one right here that does the uh, cover stitch um, foot. So that's that one right here. And it will tell you, now here's another thing that's really interesting is this popped up, this symbol. I'll make sure you guys can see this. I'm getting you as close as I can. I know it's hard. Okay, this right here is the mirror button, okay? So if I were to click this button, you see these arrows right here, these buttons, are these arrows. So if I want to change this setting, it follows this arrow, so I need to click on that button. This setting, this arrow, this button. Does that make sense? You just kind of go straight down. This one right here is the mirror feature. You can mirror things, um, different stitches, uh, decorative stitches, letterings, different things, you can mirror them. So if you want to do that, instead of this having the stitch off to the left side, that's where it is right now because it's highlighted on the left side, you click this button and now it's got an arrow pointing to the right side. It won't change what the, the stitch looks like here, but it'll let you know that this machine knows that you want it to be mirrored. Um, and then if you wanna clear this setting, you just hit C to clear and it'll go back to the left. Very simple, very easy. A lot of these stitches have mirroring um, options and some of them even have flip options. So you can mirror it left to side to side and up and down. So that's kind of cool to really have even more options on what you want to do. Um, but that's kind of some of those settings here. This right here is going to be, let's see here, we'll go to a straight stitch. This one right here is going to be your settings for your needle position. So on a straight stitch, you're not changing the width because it's a straight stitch, but you can move your needle position from left to right. Um, and then you have the length of your needle, um, or your stitch, I'm sorry, the length of your stitch. On a zigzag, it's going to look similar, but instead of um, ch you're changing the needle position, but it's since it's not a straight stitch, it's a zigzag, you're changing the width of your zigzag, okay? Um, and then you also have the length of your zigzag stitch too. So lots of, lots of helpful information right here on the screen. It's so well lit. Down here, we have more buttons. All of these arrows are going to be used when you go into all of these decorative stitches. We'll show you those in a second. And then there's a double or a twin needle, a <laughs> twin needle button right here. You can actually use a twin needle on this machine. It's one of the few that you can. Um, and I love that. I played around with it last week or two weeks ago. And it's really cool. It's not something I've ever really done a lot of, but I could see myself really utilizing the twin needle feature on this machine. You basically will have, I have a white thread here. And then there's another um, thread spool that comes in your accessories kit that goes right here and you'll have another thread here and you thread the machine with both threads and it goes through both one on each needle and um, and you get to sew two threads at once. It's really cool when you are doing like different colors and stuff it can re really be fun for adding some decorative stuff. So the twin needle feature is really, really cool. And then this little button right here, it's kind of like um, the end button <laughs> and I'll show you what I mean by that. So the next foot we're going to use is foot B. Um, but before I show you and put on foot B, I'm going to show you why, when we need it. And that's going to be for decorative stitches. Um, let's see here. We're going to go to the letters. So real quick, I know I keep moving you guys around, but I want you guys to see this. Um, up here, there's a button that has a straight and a zigzag. This is the beginning of all of these stitches. They go all the way across here 
all the way across here and all the way to 116. This includes your buttonholes, okay? The next button that does the other decorative stitches and lettering starts right here. And then it starts with one again and it goes all the way through and then all the letters, okay? So that's how you kind of read this diagram. Underneath some of these stitches, you'll see that mirror symbol that I showed you earlier. And some even have the four-way mirror where you can flip it side to side and up and down. Um, so that just lets you know which ones have those features. There's quite a few. I know it's hard to read because it's so small on this camera, but just trust me, it's there, okay? All right, so to get to those stitches, we want to do, what should we spell? Um, I did a couple earlier. Which ones did I do? Let's do home. Okay, so I'm going to go to letters. As I said, there's, you can kind of scroll through here and see all of the different, all the different stitches but I wanna to go to the letter. So I'm gonna hit this again. There are five different fonts to choose from. Um, for today's sake, I'm just gonna do the first one. And to find the letters, I'm going to scroll over and I wanna spell the word home. So H-O-M-E. See how it spells the word home right there? So easy. You literally are creating a secret sequence of stitches. That's hard for me to say. A sequence of stitches. And we wanted to stitch the letter H-O-M-E. But I don't want it to repeat the sequence. And this is where that end button I was telling you about, the stop button. It's not really stop button. It's like a, this is the last stitch button. So it's like putting a period at the end of a sentence, okay? So home period. That's it. So now we're going to stitch this. I am not doing she sells, she, I can't even say it. I am horrible with that kind of stuff. <laughs> Thanks for the challenge though. <laughs> All right, so I did a couple of examples already and I'll show it to you. So this one says tulip in the cursive font and then I did some tulips. And this one says dog and I did some dogs, but look, I mirrored one and we're gonna do that with the house. So we're gonna do the same thing now. I want it to read like these left to right. So in order to do that, I'm not going to put it in like this because our machine feeds our fabric through this way. So I really need to put it in this way so it will feed this way and read left to right. All right, so first thing I need to do is drop this foot. I want to show you guys how easy this really is. There's a little button back here. You just, so easy. It makes it foolproof. We're going to use this uh, decorative stitch foot. It's clear. Um, it's got a nice smooth bottom for feeding and then it's got a little groove in here between so that these thicker stitches, these decorative stitches, have room to go through. Okay. And again, I'm just going to place it up underneath and it clicks right into place. I'm telling you, it's just so easy. Okay, so we're going to stick our fabric in here, just like so. We have our stitches selected over here on the LED screen. Let me show you something else. You see the start-stop button right here? It's lit up green, meaning we're good to go. But did you know that this machine can actually sew without using the foot control? How cool is that? So if you want to just not put your foot to the pedal to the metal like I do all the time, you can unplug it. So you just unplug the foot control from the side of the machine. It's a separate plug-in from the actual power cord. And we just set it in my lap. And all we have to do is hit start and it will sew it for us. Um, if you are someone who um, is traveling and you need to sew but you don't really have a good place to use a foot control, maybe you're someone who's not able to use a foot control, you can still sew with this machine without it. Just unplug it. Okay, so let's just hit start. I'm going to kind of get you in here real close. I want you to see how fun this is. I love watching this machine. Ready? Then I'm going to hit my scissors and it cut 
my thread. So easy, so easy. And look, I have the word home. So fast, I love this. Um, what you can do is take some little scissors and just kind of clip these little threads in between so it looks like these do, okay? Um, but we can do that later. I want to do the little house shape. So I'm going to set this back in here. And next to the word home, I'm just going to drop my foot. And then I'm going to come back over here to this. Now I want to clear this out because I don't want to do this again. Um, I'm going to use the C button and clear it out. And I'm going to go to the little house symbol. That's going to be... Gotta get back to the beginning here. There we go. Uh, it's stitch number 26. Right there. Okay. I'm going to do a couple, but then I also want to mirror one so I can show you how to do that. So in order to select the stitch, you're just going to go over and see how it highlights it. And it's currently mirrored that way, but I want to change that. So I'm going to I hit something I didn't mean to, sorry. There we go. I'm gonna highlight it and I'm gonna click edit, sorry. Edit, and now I have my mirror option. Now it's flipping it upside down. I don't know if I really want it upside down. Should we do one upside down? I think it would be kind of funny. Let's, let's do one upside down. All right, and then we're gonna go over. We don't want that highlighted. It's still set to that. It pops up when I highlight it, but we're gonna go over and I wanna hit the stitch again. I'm going to highlight it again, hit edit. This time I'm going to hit this twice. I want to mirror the, the house. So we're going to have an, a house that's going the normal way, a house that's upside down, and a house that's flipped reversed. Okay, so we're going to do three. But I don't want it to keep, um, I don't want it to keep going. So again, I need to be sure I hit that stop button, the end button, put a period at the end. That's all folks, okay? So now that we've got those three sequence set up, we're going to zoom in and hit the start button. I have a question here that popped up. Let me read this. Did you say we can sew without the pedal, the foot pedal? Yeah, mine's unplugged. I didn't, if so that, here, I'll hold this. Here's the foot pedal. I'm gonna hold it and I'm gonna hit start. I'm going to hit the scissors. I'm going to put this back on the floor now. <laughs> Proof that I used it. I'm going to plug it back in because I'm going to need it again in a minute, but um, I'm going to undo this, pull this out, and there's our houses. Remember, we had one going the normal way, one upside down, and one mirrored to this one. See how the trees are, the house is backwards? So now it says home. Home, dog, tulip, got it all here. So how easy would this be to really personalize some of your projects, do some monogramming, make some really fun stuff. Um, I think I just love this feature. I love the sequencing on the screen. I mean, it's so easy to use. You get the hang of the buttons very quickly. It just took me a few minutes of playing around um, to figure it out. And it's easy to clear everything if I made a mistake, which you saw me do. But yeah, so there's our three examples and mirroring and flipping your stitches. All right, so the next thing I wanna show you, if there's not any questions on that, let's see here. If you're watching from the monorail at Disney, I wish I was at Disney, good for you. The happiest place on earth. I think this room right here, my craft room in Nashville, Tennessee might be the second happiest place on earth because we're all having fun sewing. <laughs> All right, so the next thing we're going to do is a buttonhole. Who is scared of buttonholes? Not me. I overcame that fear. And again, remember how I challenged you all to overcome your fear of trying something new? Well, if you haven't done a buttonhole, this is your challenge. Um, this is your buttonhole foot right here. It comes in your 
um, machine in this front compartment and it actually has a really cool little slot right there that it fits into keeps it nice and safe with all of its pieces together. Um, but this machine, this little foot right here, it's not little, it's actually kind of big. Um, it can be big and it's intimidating, but don't let it be. Um, this piece right here comes off. This is for if you have very difficult fabric or um, thicker fabric, you need some extra um, support here. You can use that. We're not gonna use it today. We're gonna set that aside and I'm gonna attach this foot and it's really easy to do. But before I do that, um, I have a button here. I just have a random bag of buttons, so I picked this one out, it's blue. Um, and it's a decent sized button. And here's how this foot works. The trick is knowing how big your buttonhole needs to be for your button. This foot takes that guesswork out of it. So you slide this, see how this goes up and down? You're just going to stick your button in there and push it up until it's tight. And that way it knows this is how big your buttonhole needs to be. And it's going to sew from here to here. This is measuring, it measures your button for you to get the right size buttonhole. So um, let's attach this foot and I'll show you. We're going to leave the button in here. It's not going to be in the way. It's actually going to be out the back side. So move this over so you guys can see what I'm doing. All right, we're gonna drop that foot. So easy. And then this is actually where your ankle needs to attach right here on this front part. I'm just gonna lift this up a little higher to get over it clicks into place. My button is way back here. It is not going to be in the way. So we should be good to go. Uh, let's see here. Now I'm going to lift this back up. See how it's attached. I got to get my fabric under here. I've done a couple of examples already with this. So I'm going to just do another one on the same piece of fabric, but you'll notice on this fabric that I've been using, it's cotton fabric, but I do have a stabilizer behind it. You always want a stabilizer when you're doing decorative stitches, when you're doing the lettering, when you're doing buttonholes, it's going to make your stitches stronger, especially on a thin cotton fabric like this. Um, depending on the type of fabric you are using determines the type of stabilizer you need. Today I'm just using tearaway because it's scrap fabric. It's fine. Um, if you are doing sewing on something stretchy, you're going to want a different type of stabilizer for stretchy fabrics. I'm going to be doing another video here in the future about stabilizers and appliques and when to use them. Um, so stay tuned for that. But for today, I'm just using a tearaway stabilizer on this. I'm just going to set this down. Now we're going to go over here and we have 13 one step buttonhole options. It's, we have a lot, okay? This is our standard buttonhole. So I'm going to clear all of this. Now I'm going to click on the standard one. We're just going to go with the basics today. Shows foot F. Now obviously this one does not resemble the size or length of the one that we just put on, but that is that foot, okay? Um, again, you can change some settings here. What's really cool about this machine, and I didn't mention this earlier, is it has an automatic tension sensor. It knows based on the stitch that you choose what the tension needs to be for that. Um, it takes the guesswork out of that. So if you've ever had struggles with tension, and I think we all have in sewing at some point, this machine automatically detects what the tension needs to be and sets it so that you don't have to fool with it. So unless you're using a, a unusual type of thread or fabric, you might have to adjust it, but it automatically sets it based on that stitch selection, which is really nice huge feature that people don't really realize because it's not a button but here it says auto and so it's automatically selecting that tension for you and then you can adjust it as you see fit but we're just going to go with what it says okay we're going to trust this machine you recently tried the the um the button hole foot and it is the best thing ever i agree with you 100 percent. okay so I'm going to use my foot pedal this time. I'm going to let's see here if I can reach around the back side to hold my thread. I like to hold it while it's getting started. Well, what did I do? 
I think I got it caught, sorry. That was my bad. Let me clip that real quick. I told you it was, something was bound to, we were doing so great. <laughs> something was bound to happen. Here, we'll start over here. All right, we've got our buttonhole stitch. And our foot is down. Well, oh, I know what I did, you guys. I got so excited to do it. I, I skipped a step. Now we won't ever forget it again. Isn't that the truth? All right, so let's try this again. We're gonna put the foot down. Remember how I said that there's a space back here and that tells it how far it needs to make or how big it needs to make the, the buttonhole for this particular button that's sitting back here? Well, in order to, for it to really know how to do that, there's a lever thing that comes down right here. This thing, if you've ever wondered what that is, there you go. That's how it knows where to start and stop your buttonhole. Genius, right? It really helps if you put it down, which I wasn't doing, and now I know what I did wrong, and I'll never forget it again. <laughs> and hopefully you won't either. Okay, let's try this again. See how I got to the front? And now it's going to the side and back. It's a big buttonhole. It does a straight stitch down. And then it does, it's does closing off the bottom. does a few to knot it off and when it's done you know it's done and we're going to get our scissors there is a thread cutter on the side so if you're used to that by all means it's there for you but once you have the automatic thread cutter you kind of get spoiled all right so there's our buttonhole finally sorry about that guys um so there's our buttonhole now i did the same one earlier right here and i cut it open so what i want to show you is i'm going to lift this lever back up I'm gonna drop this, lift the foot and drop it and take it off. So I want my little button back. I'm gonna take it out and show you that it fits. So my button fits right in that perfectly. It goes straight through to the other side. But you want it to be a little snug because you want it to stay. But how great is that? And it has 13 buttonholes. 13. So we kind of went over a lot today, I know. There's a lot more to this machine. But what questions can I answer? Like I said, it is on sale right now. It's $150 off. Oh, my camera is so crooked. Y'all are all probably like, we're watching you so. <laughs> uh, let's see here. What's the presser foot bundle? You know what, um, if you can send a DM to Singer Sewing Company, our Instagram direct message, they'll be able to give you the link to the um, presser foot bundle. Um, I know that there is an additional bundle that you can get with this machine right now. It's like a promo that they're running, um, but I don't know all the details on it, so I don't wanna speak incorrectly on that. So if you send them a DM, they can answer that for you. Um, let's see here. All right, so I think we're good. So today we learned how to use the button foot and all of, there's like, no joke, 13 different buttonholes. We also learned how to do sequencing with the letters and the decorative stitches, how to mirror and flip them, which was super fun. We learned that we can sew without the foot control. We just unplug it. I mean, that easy. Um, we learned about the um, free motion foot which is super cool and how I finally figured out how to do a flower. <laughs> it's still not perfect, but this was so much fun. It felt like I was drawing with my sewing machine with stitches and it was really exciting to not feel limited that I can literally do whatever I want. So this was a really cool tool. Um, so we learned a lot of different things today, learned about the different accessories that come with this machine. Um, 
the machine started beeping, and they indicated to raise the foot. The foot was off, so why the beep? Let's read that again. I used my foot correctly and went to another project. After that, my machine started beeping at me, indicating to raise the foot. The foot was off, so why the beep? It may be, it may have not just been indicating to raise, it may have been indicating that there's not a foot in place. Um, so that could have been it. Um, hmm, that would be my guess, is if you were trying to start another project and you were doing settings and it was beeping because the, either you had the wrong foot or the foot wasn't in, attached properly, sometimes that can be the case. Oh, th oh thank you, Elizabeth. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, um, happy National Sewing Month um, and happy fall. I hope you guys have some fun projects set up for you to do. I really want to challenge you to try something new on your machine that you've never done before. Whether you have the 9960 or any other singer or sewing machine, um, pull out a foot that you've never used. That you, There's a ton that come in your accessories and try it. We'll figure out what it is and try it. Even if it's just on a scrap piece of fabric, just to say, I learned something new. Okay, I, I feel like I kind of get in a rut and I sew a lot of the same things over and over. But when I force myself to learn something new, I feel really accomplished and it makes me inspired to try some different things and maybe implement those things into what I've been sewing. So I challenge you to do that. I hope you've had a wonderful Tuesday. Thank you for joining us. Again, if you um, missed our last live last month, that was for um, comparing mechanical and computerized sewing machines. That live is um, over on our IGTV from last month. So you can go now <laughs> that we're wrapping up and watch that one if you're still on the fence of which machine you should get. But I really hope this machine gave you some insights to the Quantum Stylus 9960. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to send us a direct message and we'll respond. And happy sewing, guys. Have a great one. Bye.